Welcome to the School Leaders Podcast. My name is Dr. Gastrit Harrigan, the podcast for current and emerging school leaders, those who support and supervise them. You will hear from passionate educational leaders who are transforming their schools, communities, and creating positive outcomes for students. I will also share my personal reflections and tips from over 15 years as a school leader. Together, we will talk about how to level up our schools and leadership practices. Hello, welcome to the School Leaders Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Gastrid Harrigan. In today's episode, I want to share tips for new principal. If you're a newly appointed principal, congratulations. I am proud of you. I know you are excited and ready to turn around your school or to scale things up and make it a better school. So as you start your first year as a principal, I would like for you to consider these tips that I'm about to share. Uh, You got the keys to your school. Now what? Well, I remember when I first got the keys uh, to my school. Uh, by the time I was named the new principal, I was actually in the local newspaper. The article was a, was talking about and discussing the bullying complaints, the challenges, the issues that were really facing the school. After I was approved by the board, I came to find out that within five months, two veteran principals were forced to retire. And on my first day on the job, I found out that I had a lot of union grievances, state and local investigation waiting for me to address. Uh, I had inner fightings, teachers and staff were passing each other, uh, literally passing each other in the hallway, and we're not talking, we're not greeting each other. My first day on the job after I got my keys, uh, I showed up to the school, and one of my assistant principals came in and says, I'm retiring effective today. And within two months, My second and last assistant principal, he came in and says, I'm retiring also. I am a new principal. Two months in, I had no assistant principal. I have state, local investigations. I got union grievances taking place. A lot of challenges, a lot of inner fightings and issues in the school. And yet I have no assistant principal. Needless to say, I was inheriting a negative, toxic Uh, school culture and to where we are today. It is a great place to work. Students achievement is at its highest. Uh, We have an effective rating from the state. We moved from about 10% graduation rate uh, to over 89% in our graduation rate. Uh, And we have over $600,000 in grants and partnership with our local city government and several local businesses where students are completing their their paid internship and getting on-the-job training. And we are also a Florida PBIS positive behavior intervention and support model school. So today, I want to share several tips that I think you might find valuable during your first year as a principal. Tip number one. Get to know your staff. In other words, it is important to begin by building trusting relationship with your teachers and with your staff. In real estate, I don't know if you ever heard this, they always say it is about location, location, location. I believe in leadership, it is all about relationship, relationship, relationship. I like what Michael Fullen say in his book, Leading in a Culture of Change. He says that leaders must be consummate relationship builders with diverse people and groups, especially with people different than themselves. As a principal or school leader, uh, you must work to be a relationship builder. Let me say that again. As a principal or school leader, you must work to be a relationship builder. How can you build relationship as a new principal? How did I build relationship as a principal? For me, my first year One of the things I did was I took time and met with each and every one of my teachers and staff. I met with the custodial team, clerical, the teacher assistant, behavior team, each person on that behavior team, each security staff member. Obviously, I met with every one of the teachers 
and every one of the staff. Yes, I wanted to find out again from their perspective some of the things that are going on. What is it that they 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 hope we can get done or change? But really, I was also being keen to find out a little bit about themselves, their family, their kids' name. You know where their kids are. They're in school, college, elementary, uh, middle school, and and really finding a little bit about them, whatever they were willing to share. Because it was, for me, I wanted to make those personal connections. And really, you want to pay attention to some of the things that, you know, the staff, the teachers share in those conversations. Because later on, these are some of the things you are going to use to make those emotional connections. To when you see them in the hallway or you see them past their room, you ask them, hey, how's your kids is doing? How, how is he doing on that sport team? How is he doing on that band? Those are the things that's going to make teachers, the staff feel, oh, he cares about me because he will remember my child's name. He will remember whatever that, that, that staff member. Membership. The other thing that I did to continue to build that relationship was our monthly chew and chat session. Monthly chew and chat session. It's basically I invited staff, teachers and staff to come and eat lunch with me. I provided the food free of charge and I basically had two basic rules. They were number one, you had to eat or drink something. Number two, we will not discuss the kids' curriculum or the school. We will not discuss any of the issues that are happening at the school during the chew and chat session. For me, it was a time for me to get to know them a little bit better, uh, to continue to forge those connections and those relationships. It was a time to break bread and, and to really continue to make those connections, build those relationships, and, and continue to forge those trusting relationships. Another thing you can do to, to continue to get to know your staff is, is, is have an open door policy. That way staff know they can drop by anytime um, to talk to you, to chat with you. For me, if my door's open, you could come in and talk to me. You don't need an appointment. If you want a private time, obviously, you could set it up with my secretary. But if my door's open, which was 80% of the time my door's was open, you could drop by and we'll chat. Tip number two, be visible. Spend as little time in your office as possible. I have learned that when I am in my, when I am not in my office, I am out in the hallway and I am building relationship. I am getting a chance to get to know the kids, get to see them, get to learn their name. When 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 you are visible, it, it helps you to really forge relationship with the kids. Also, be visible and be in the drop-off and the pickup area. You get to meet the parents. You get to connect. You get to talk to the parents. Obviously, you get to connect and see the kids. Uh, let them let it be that you are the first face they see when they are entering the building, and perhaps the the last face they see or the last person they see uh, before leaving the school ground. Being visible allow you to learn and monitor also what is going on in the school. You you get to learn a, a lot about the school and its culture by just being visible, by being in the in different areas of the school at different time. Uh, you also get to find out the hot spots in your school. Without people telling you, you, you get to see those things that are happening in specific areas. And those things are going to become important when later on during entering your year two, if you're making any adjustments and changes. A lot, you can learn a lot by being visible, by walking around, building relationship, connecting with kids in the hallway and passing, seeing teachers in the hallway. It's important to be visible. If you're at a secondary school, it's important also to show up to the games. You can't be at every game. That is why you have other assistant principal, obviously use them, but be make sure that especially your first year, your first two years, make sure you're at most of the games or at least the big games. And, and so that way you get to know the parents. You also get to meet different members of the community because again, uh, at the secondary level, parents tend to show up for games, for activities uh, that are happening in the evening. Tip number three, ask lots of questions. And that really goes with tip number two, which is be visible. You need to ask lots of questions. Uh, you need to ask why certain things are the way they are. Uh, why do we do the things we do? And why do we do it a certain way? Before you change things, it's very important to find out why things are being done the way they are being done. Obviously, it goes without saying that if you're asking questions, you should do less talking and more listening. 
So you're asking questions, but really you 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 are listening. You're you're making note of critical critical things that staff, students, teachers are saying. Speak to kids. Kids will tell you the truth in the hallway, in the cafeteria, in the uh, outside during uh, lunch. If you're at a secondary school, however the makeup of your school, take time also to talk to the kids. Ask them questions. They will tell you. Ask them what they enjoy about the school, what they like, what they dislike. They just be ready to receive and uh, uh, the truth because they will tell you things that perhaps you may not want to hear. But really, uh, by asking questions, you will know what things to change, what things to touch, and things you should leave alone. Not everything you should tackle your first year or even your second year. That would allow you to prioritize areas that you need to, to, to change, shifts, and, and, and adjustments that you might need to make. Tip number four, don't make major changes unless it has to do with security and safety concerns. So tip number four is don't make any major changes. Don't make any major changes unless it, it's impact safety and security. Because during your first year and new to the school, you want to take the time to really get to know teachers and staff, get to know their strength, get to know their areas of strength before you start shifting things around. Uh, you need to get to know the formal and also the informal leaders. Sometimes the informal leaders are more powerful than the actual leaders. You, you need to know who people go to uh, for answers. You, you need to know and pick up in staff meetings. Who do they look to before asking a questions or even providing input and feedback? Those are your informal leaders who really pull the strings. So, you you know, by uh, you need to your first year, you really need to take time to get to know the culture before you start shifting. So, you know, the what you should change and what you should not change certain routines, certain uh, traditions, you shouldn't change certain of them. You should change. But again, it, you need to take the time to learn and get to know those things and what is working and what is not working, because what you want to do is build relationship first. I ask lots of questions, then begin to work on making those changes uh, later on. I remember my first year and we used my, my school at the time, they used to um, do dismissal, bring all the kids out of class toward the end of the day in the cafeteria, media center. They had major, at, the, at least three major areas where they would have kids for dismissal. And, you know, I, I sat back and I observed and teachers were bringing their kids on to in the end of the day. But one of the things I noticed that the, the, there would be a lot of fightings, obviously, because you're bringing all the kids together. There's a lot of frustration. Kids are missing their bus. Different things are happening. So I started asking questions. Uh, why do we do the things we do? Why are we doing it this way? Do we have enough supervision? Because we are getting fights and we are getting different issues. And and and, and one or two occasions, teachers, of course, were trying to break up uh, fights and they end up getting hurt. So again, going around asking questions and trying to find that. And really, no one could really tell me why they did dismissal the way they were doing it. Nobody really knew why they were they did it the way they, they did it. So I began to ask questions, had several staff meetings, get staff input, come to realize not only did staff didn't know, teachers didn't know why we did we were doing it the way we were doing it, but really that was not really their, their way or their preference. They really didn't like it that way because, again, we, they were uh, they had to move toward the end of the day, bring all the kids, kids that are not from their class, into one environment, and oftentimes they didn't know the other kids, and that was causing confusion if a kid didn't know his bus or couldn't hear his bus because of the noise level. So there, needless to say, there was a lot of things going on. And I've, obviously, for me, it was more the safety and the security because of a couple of fights uh, issues that were happening. So that it so we, we I shifted that and made that major change my first year. But again, th what drove that for me was really number one, safety, number two, security, making sure everybody was secure. And 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 so uh, you want to analyze that by making changes by by asking questions before you make any changes. And you want to save major changes really for your second uh, second year and beyond. Tip number five. Share your core values with staff. In your first few staff meeting, you should share your core values. You should share with teachers and staff what is important to you. What are those things that are critical that are your core to the work that you do? By sharing your core values, you know you are letting the teachers and the staff know your why. 
your passion, your mission? What are those things that are really important to you that, 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 that speak to who you are and that drives you on a day-to-day -day basis? For me, I call them my non-negotiables. I didn't really use the term at the time, my core values. I just call them, listen, these are the things I was not going to negotiate on, right? And, you know, a few of them were treating kids right, uh, making sure we plan and deliver rigorous lesson, engaging lesson, making sure safety and security were important. Uh, John Maxwell, the leadership guru, stressed the importance of us writing down our core values and striving really each day to live by them. So if you don't have, if you have not written your core values down, I encourage you to write them down today, write them down and, and then share them consistently at different staff meetings, at different uh, small meetings that you have, whether it's with your leadership team, whether it's with the, the school in, uh, at large, but share your core values so teachers know your why, teachers know your mission, teachers know really your heartbeat in terms of why you do the things you do. Tip number six, don't talk about the previous principle. You should not compete or talk about the previous principle. You will find that there are things that he or she did differently that you don't care for, uh, things you perhaps disagree with how certain things were being implemented, but don't talk about the previous principle. Teachers and staff will bring up the faults, the mistakes, the problem of the old principle. Don't fall for it. Do not engage in these negative talks and conversation. The principle you are, you are replacing was not perfect. And soon you will find that, that you are not perfect either. Uh, stay away from the judgment and talking bad about the previous principle. Move forward, focusing on students, focusing on the staff, focusing on the teachers, the parents, because that's why you are there and they need you now. In the words of Alison Apsey, principal and blogger, she says, never let self-doubt cause you to live without your values. Teachers are not looking for you to be their hero. They are looking for you to bring out the hero in them. So today, don't waste your time talking about the previous principle. Focus on your kids and bring out the hero out of your teachers. So six tips for new principles. We said number one, get to know your staff. Be visible in your school. Ask lots of questions. Don't make major changes unless it has to do with safety and security, uh, share your core values with staff. Communicate those consistently. And lastly, don't talk about the previous principle. There you have it, folks. I hope you were able to take away at least one nugget to improve your first year as a principal. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me today. Please consider subscribing to the podcast. Leave a five-star rating and a comment. Share this episode with a friend and on social media. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for leadership ideas and tips. Again, thank you for joining me today. Until next time.